I want to show you how you can master your quarter inch seam on the Husqvarna Viking Designer Epic 3. Now, today I actually have a project that I need to actually sew a quarter inch seam. So I'm going to take you through the steps that I would do for selecting the right threads, choosing the right needle, and which throw plate to use. Plus, I'm going to use the brand new projection option on this machine and show you how you can move it to project one quarter inch line onto or beside your fabric so you get the perfect stitch. So first off, let's talk about threads and needles. So one of the things that really makes a difference is when you go to press your seam that you don't want a really, really thick thread. Now, I know that thread isn't like naturally thick, but a medium weight thread can actually leave a little ridge. And so when you go to press it out, it actually takes away from the finished block size. So one of the things that you'll find is when you use a thinner thread. Now, one of the options these days a lot of quilters love is the Arafil thread weight of 50 slash two and using neutral colors is wonderful because you can go from any color of fabric and it doesn't show. So that is number one. Another thread that I actually use sometimes is just my plain old embroidery polyester isocord embroidery thread. It also is thinner so it lays really flat when I press those seams um, to the side I need them to press to. Now another benefit for threads that are thinner means that you're going to get a lot more yardage on the bobbin. So it'll feel like your bobbin lasts forever. So those are benefits just for doing basic piecing with good quality thinner thread for your machine. Okay, so I've gone ahead and wound a bobbin. I am going to use the RFL thread, so I'll get ready to get ready with that. I'm a fan of using quilting needles or Microtex needles of the smaller size. So 7010 Microtex are great. They make such a precision stitch, especially when you're going through multiple layers of seam allowances. The quilting needles, same thing, extra sharp on the ends to make a perfect stitch, even when you have to go over really thick intersections. With this machine comes a quarter inch foot. So go ahead and switch over to this foot. Yes, you can purchase this foot with like a guide if you want, but see if the projection that's built into this machine gives you kind of that visual, it's a line instead of just a bar of thread. Now do make sure that your dual feed is brought down. This is one of those feet with the groove in the back for the dual feed. So if you don't bring it down, your fabric's gonna get a little fishy and that's not gonna be great. Now I have put in all the accessories to this particular box, which means my straight stitch throw plate is stored underneath and it down at the bottom. So I'm gonna just go ahead and push that to the side to switch it out take out the magnetic screwdriver, take the door off your bobbin um, area, and then just take this and kind of lift the little corner. So you don't actually have to take out any screws. This just lifts off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it. Now the machine is going to see that this throat plate is on. And so it will actually keep me from picking like a zigzag or a decorative stitch because this only has a little tiny, tiny hole, which makes this give you more perfect stitches because the needle can't move left or right at all. And it keeps everything going in the center. I use this plate also for machine embroidery, for your embroidery designs, and also for machine quilting. So when you're doing free motion quilting and your fabric's going in all different directions, that straight stitch throat plate is ideal. So to store this away, just take your accessory box, lay this down so the little top little notches line up and then just push it to the left and it will stay in there and stay nice and secure. Okay, so let's go to the machine. I am going to be sewing on a curve. And this is the base for our Stitching Cosmos online course. So I'm actually gonna show you how I cut these blocks with the cut around tool, and then a little trick for pinning and stitching this. But now with the extra bonus of the projection. Let me 
introduce myself. I'm Sarah from SewingMastery.com and I do all the free video tutorials for tons of different machines, embroidery machines, and sergers. So if you're looking for all the other tutorials on the Husqvarna Viking Designer Epic 3, click on the description link below this YouTube video and find the complete playlist of all the videos that we have done. Now we'll get into a full video into, of the projection of this machine, but for right now, I'm gonna just highlight the parts that I am using right now. Let me put a piece of fabric that is dark underneath the foot. So when I do turn it on, you can kind of see it come to life. So over here on the side, it kind of looks like a shining light. Go ahead and open up that menu and then go ahead and turn the projection on. I have gone ahead and selected and set the stitch guide one to be of a wider width of line so you can really see that line coming down on the fabric. And then I've also moved it so that the line isn't in the center of the foot. It is actually six millimeters to the right and that is what is going to be lined up with the quarter inch. So yes, six millimeters is your quarter inch to the, to the right. Of course, you can go to the left too. And we have lots of different options. I've also turned the color for this brightness to white. That seemed to be the best for my eyes, but you can adjust that to different colors and also not just a quick color, but you can pick out something like in the turquoise area as well. I'll just touch okay, because now we can come on over to the foot and truly see how it's going to help me stay nice and precise. If your machine is showing the grid, I have already turned that off. I'll turn it back on just so you can see it really quick. It puts in all the extra lines, which is great, but it tends to be a little busy for my eyes when I really just need the one that's just kind of showing that single line. I do have a very faint line for the center of my foot, which is kind of nice, because then I can really see that that's about a quarter inch away and I can stay nice and lined up. Now I'm gonna move the fabric just a little bit to the side because you're gonna notice as I move this over, that line shines right on the line of the that is on the bobbin case door. So again, I'm gonna be really able to, like if I get a little too far over and I'm seeing my line, I know really quick to kind of back off and keep it nice and lined up. I've also set the stitch length because I'm sewing curves to a 2.0 stitch length, or you can use the sewing advisor and select for a lightweight fabric and it will automatically turn you to a shorter stitch length. So why am I actually sewing these blocks together? So during these filming of the tutorials, I'm gonna actually do some blocks like our Stitching Cosmos, where when we stitch out decorative stitches, uh, I'm actually gonna be doing something that I'm just not doing on pieces of fabric. I throw away, I'm actually going to make myself a Viking Epic 3 kind of stitching cosmos. So why not make some blocks ahead of time so that I can be ready and actually have something to show when I'm done with over 100 videos on this machine. Now, if you haven't checked out the Stitching Cosmos course just yet, there are free videos in the course you can watch to see if that course might be right for you. Again, you can find those links in the description below. Now, my favorite pins that I use, now I have only those on my magnetic pin cushion, is the Quilting Pins Fine from Chloe over. They are long, they are sharp. I thought I didn't like pinning and come to find out I was just using dull pins. So when we go to pin for these blocks to pin them together, I take each block and fold in half, find the center point, little ridge, and doing the same thing here, finding that center. And then I only use five pins. So as I'm getting ready to line up, we'll put one pin on the top, Yes, the, the one with all the extra fabric is the one I like to have on the top. And I use the other kind of rounded ice cream cone shaped piece of fabric underneath. And then when I sew this block, the nice thing and why we picked this block for our Stitching Cosmos course is that once you're done with one seam, you're ready to start the lesson. And I didn't want it to be like really like a lot of complex. I just wanted one seam. And being that this is a very um, gentle curve, it actually is much easier. So if you've never done curves before, it actually is a great place to, to start. Now, there are three pins, four pins. Let's 
put the fifth one in, and then I'll show you how I just gently kind of tug on the fabric as I stretch it into place as I sew. So this is not a fast process. I just kind of sew from pin to pin. And as you kind of pull out, everything lies flat. That shorter stitch length puts in more stitches for a smoother edge. And I'll also set the machine to stop with the needle in the down position. So every time I stop, the foot will pop up and hover and kind of relax the two fabrics. So I'm gonna just work my way from one end to the next. Perfect every single time.